Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece. This is our last video, K, on pulmonary ventilation. There are quite a few more videos to follow that are going to discuss gas exchange, and eventually we will wrap up this whole series of videos on the respiratory system um, by videos that cover gas transport. Let's take a look at some of the respiratory volumes. You know by now that at rest, we move about a half a liter air of air when we inhale, and we move about a half a liter air of air when we exhale. We refer to this half a liter of air in and out as our tidal volume. We'll abbreviate that with TV for tidal volume. Now imagine that you took extra air in on top of your tidal volume. In other words, so let's assume you're sitting in your chair there watching this video. Why don't you go ahead and take a regular breath in, a regular uh, restful inhalation and stop for just a second. And now force yourself to take extra air in on top of that restful inhalation. That takes us to this portion of our graph. This is our inspiratory reserve volume, or IRV. So everything here in this orangish color is going to be our IRV. And notice that it's going to be approximately 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 milliliters. Most of these values depicted on graphs like that, this, by the way, are for males, though. So we have analogously an expiratory reserve volume. So if you take a restful breath out, you expel, a, you exhale at rest, and now force yourself to exhale more air, then you are here in the green zone. And that is approximately, well, a little less than uh, 1,500, maybe more like for about 1,400 mils. So what you notice here is that it is much harder to exhale air, um, or I should say harder. It is, we, we tend to exhale uh, less air than we can inhale. Forced inhalation is much easier than forced exhalation. Now, the other thing for you to notice here in the purple zone is that no matter how hard you push the air out of your lungs, shown here by this expiratory reserve volume, you're never going to be capable of expelling all the air in your lungs. So your lungs always keep what we refer to as a reserve volume of a little over a, a liter. So that is a volume of air you cannot expel no matter how hard you try. So now that you understand what these different volumes are, we can use some formulas here. And you see the formulas uh, listed here below. VC stands for vital capacity. And especially for those of you who are going into respiratory ter therapy, this is a very important formula for you to remember, and especially vital capacity. So when we add these three volumes together, that is your uh, inspiratory reserve volume, and your tidal volume, and your expiratory volume, we have our vital capacity. And the vital capacity for um, males is, a, is around five liters, as you can see here, with the residual volume a little over a liter. So vital capacity is the sum of the inspiratory volume, reserve volume, plus the tidal volume, plus the expiratory reserve volume. Now we also have something called total lung capacity, and total lung capacity consists of the vital capacity volume, plus the residual volume. So the total lung capacity is all of the air in the lungs. Most of you, when you're taking care of patients, 
will on a regular basis be collecting your patient's vitals, as they're called, anywhere from their blood pressure to their temperature and also, for instance, the respiratory rate. So you will literally watch your patient's breathing and count the number of breaths your patient takes per minute. And this is what we call the respiratory rate. And so that ranges from about 12 to 20. 20 is a, is a bit high. It's probably more 12 to 15, 16, somewhere along there. 20 is already pretty fast breathing. Along with that, we can also calculate the amount of air that we move per minute. We call this the minute respiratory volume or MRV. So this is the amount of air we move in and out per minute. And the way we can calculate this is by multiplying our tidal volume, which you know is always 500 mils approximately at rest. So we're talking here now at rest times the respiration rate um, of the patient at that time. And so we have our 500 mils, let's say times 12 breaths per minute. That means that Per minute that patient is moving about six liters of air. Before we move on learning about gas exchange in uh, the next videos that are coming up, we have to be clear on what is meant by dead space, particularly anatomical dead space. Anatomical dead space refers to the volume of air that keeps hanging out in the conducting respiratory pathway. So the air that is not taking part in the gas exchange. And on average, that air adds up to about 150 mils. So of the 500 mils that we inhale and of the 500 mils that we exhale, about 150 mils just hangs out in the respiratory tract and does not participate in gas exchange. Now, in some cases, we also need to keep in mind something called alveolar dead space. Now, in most of us, when we're healthy, this is not going to be an important dead space to, to bear in mind. But in people who have issues with functioning alveoli, for instance, people in, with, with problems uh, who suffer from emphysema may have alveoli that are not functioning at all anymore. And so we have additional dead space in there, which we refer to alveolar dead space. So your total dead space is the sum of the anatomical dead space and the alveolar dead space. In our future discussions, this anatomical dead space of about 150 mils is going to come up again. So keep that in mind. Now, on a final note um, about pulmonary ventilation, and we're wrapping up our discussion on ventilation, there are many additional air movements, respiratory air movements, by the way, um, to mention, such as coughing, sneezing, crying, laughing, hiccups, yawning, and even the falsafos maneuvers. And so this finally wraps up our discussion on pulmonary ventilation. And notice that I'll put little check marks to um, indicate that we finished our discussion of that particular topic. So we're now going to move on to gas exchange which we can divide up into external and internal respiration.